Hey everybody, Ben here from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios, and this is everything you need to know about pastels in less than six minutes. <laughs> so what exactly is a pastel? In short, pastels are sticks of pigment with a binder that are used for drawing. And most of the time, when a piece is created using pastel, it's called a drawing, but there are a few people that also refer to pastel pieces as paintings. The reason for this is because when you work with pastels, a lot of times you're blending colors together in a similar way to that you would when you're painting. So when talking about pastels, you're looking at truly really two main types, oil and chalk. Oil pastel drawings are the ones that are often referred to as paintings. For this reason, oil pastel can be a little bit difficult to work with, but it can also be really great to sort of really blend and mix those colors together, creating something that really does appear to be a painting. Although in a very humid environment, oil pastels can take months or even years to dry, making it difficult to apply something like fixative to the surface. Next up, we've got our regular chalk pastels. Now these can be your standard compressed pigment pastels like Rembrandt, or they can be something like Conte crayons. Your standard chalk pastels are often just called pastels, or maybe French pastels. A lot of high quality branded pastels will often boast that they're just compressed pigment, and while some of them are, a lot more of them use an additional bit of binder, such as gum arabic, to kind of hold everything together and make sure you're not really losing the integrity and everything just falls to pieces. Both chalk pastels and Conte should be applied to a textured surface, something like pastel paper or watercolor paper. So what exactly is Conte then in relation to pastels? In short, a Conte crayon is a harder, more compressed version of your standard chalk pastels. While some Conte crayons are made with pigments, most are actually made with compressed graphite or charcoal. But whether the Conte you're using is made with compressed pigments, like many modern variations do, or graphite or charcoal, it really doesn't matter what they're made with, you could use them roughly in the same piece or interchangeably with your standard chalk pastels. So of course, like any drawing media, besides just the media itself, there's a lot of additional tools that you can use along with that media to kind of give yourself some special effects and help aid you in the process of drawing. Much like in the Everything You Need to Know About Graphite video, you can use tortillions and blending stumps to kind of do some interesting blending techniques with pastels. However, the best way to blend pastels is actually with your fingers and with your hands. This may seem a little strange because also in that graphite video I mentioned how the impurities and oils in your hand can work their way onto the page and kind of cause problems with graphite. Well, actually with pastels, it kind of improves the quality of the pastels and helps them blend a little bit easier. So yeah, maybe you're not going to be absolutely keen on using your fingers and your hands to get all messy and covered in chalk, and while that's technically part of using chalk pastels, you can look at the other things like a soft uh, bristled paintbrush or something like a chamois cloth. And if you're new to pastels and you think you're probably going to be making a few mistakes, or if you're more advanced with them and doing some subtractive techniques, you might want to take a look at a kneaded eraser. Now, personally, when I work with pastels, a kneaded eraser is pretty much essential. If you're doing anything, you make big areas of mistakes, this thing, little guy, will actually lift the pastels right off the page. And if you're somebody who just hates the feel of kneaded erasers, you can actually use a piece of soft bread to do the exact same thing. So now that we've talked about our materials, let's talk about what we're going to be drawing onto. Is it paper? Is it cardboard? Actually, it's both. One of the best things about pastels is that they really can be used on any kind of rough surface. While your best bet is going to be a type of paper like pastel paper that the medium is actually supposed to go on, you can also use really any textured paper. If you're looking for something besides just paper, you can take a look at something like illustration board or pastel board. Additionally, felt board, if you can find it, is a really, really good idea for pastels because it offers texture, but it also offers a way for the pastels to really sort of stick on to the surface. It doesn't work as well for erasing, but if you're looking for something a little more permanent, I definitely recommend finding some felt board. You can also use something like Golden's Fine Pumice Gel, which I love, I talk about this stuff all the time, as well as something as simple as smooth sandpaper. And if you're looking for a really alternative surface, why not consider something as simple as cardboard? I mean, it sounds really simple, but there's actually quite a lot of artists that do amazing works with pastels and cardboard. So with all this information, you're probably ready to start, but let's first weigh the pros and the cons. Pastels allow you to blend and manipulate the drawing media in ways that other drawing media just can't do. It also creates a really unique look and can be a really great way to practice painting before you ever pick up a brush. Plus, any artist out there that would love to do portraits will probably love what you can do blending skin tones with this medium. However, pastels can be a little bit tricky to learn. Specifically, chalk pastels and Conte crayons can be extraordinarily messy, 
and can also create dust that sort of flies up. And if you're somebody with breathing problems, that may not be ideal. And with any art medium, any of the pigments that are derived from heavy metals like cadmiums and cobalts can get into that dust, and if it's all over your hands and all over your clothes, it can be a contaminated working environment. Granted, I'm not saying any of this to scare you, but it is something to kind of think about while you're working with the medium. So if you're not sure which one you want to try, why not try both? Many art stores have an open stock system where you can buy one or two individual pastels and try them out before you decide to get a whole pack. Plus, buying individually is great if you're on a budget. And unlike some other art media, the higher price usually does mean that you're getting a higher quality here. So be sure to subscribe for more art videos, and this has been from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios. See you guys next time.